let's consider this computer program here. And let's start with the first line, A is assigned hello. Now when you see an assignment statement like this, what's going to happen is an object is going to be created. Now this object, in this particular case, is going to be an instance of the string class because you can see hello in fact is a string. Now if we look at the execution space for this and the model we've been using so far in our descriptions of simple programs like these, we know we have an execution space and we have a string class and we produce this instance of the string class, i.e. object, which we can see as an ID, a type and the value. And we can see the value is hello and it's hello because we can see up here we've got this literal string hello within the program. If we come back to this object and you can see that it's been labelled with A. Now this is a binding of the object to this particular label. Of course the label is a variable identifier as you can see here in the computer program. Now of course this line is going to print A. Now that means it's going to print this value here which is obviously hello. Then it's going to print the ID of A so it's going to print this value on the screen. So let's have a look at that bit of the uh, output. Here we can see the output and when the first two print statements that appear in the program are executed we get the output as I've just described. Now if we have a look at this particular program statement we can see here we have an augmented operator. We introduced these earlier in the playlist. Here we can see we've got a variable identifier and over here you can see we've got a literal string that contains the word world. And you can see in front of the W we have a space. And that's simply because what this program statement is going to do, it's going to join to the variable A, world, and therefore form hello world. And this space ensures there's a, a space between hello and world. And then of course we're going to print the ID and print the output A. But let's have a look at what actually happens here. This is saying go and add the literal string world to the hello that already exists. And we can see the hello already exists here in this particular object that has this particular label. Where this object is bound to this label as this was achieved by the first program statement here. So when we actually execute this, what will happen is because a object of type string is immutable, we're not going to change the value here to hello world. What's actually going to happen is Python is going to create another instance and this instance is going to take the value of hello world. Consequently, we're now going to see that this new object is going to be bound to A, so this label is moved to here. And of course, the other object, the first one we created, is not bound to anything. And Python looks for these types of situations where there's objects in the memory and nothing's bound to it. There's no label bound to it. There's no identifier bound to it. Or if you go back to our previous models, there's no object reference to it. Consequently, you can't get at it. If you haven't got a label attached to it, how do you get at it within the program? So what Python will do, it'll garbage collect this at some point, and I'm showing it going now, obviously. Then, of course, we come to these two statements, and what these are going to now do, they're going to refer to this new object, which has got the label A. So the output from the program will be, as you can see here, you print the ID of A, you locate the label, this is the ID, that's what gets printed here. You print A and of course you locate the label, this is the value, so hello world gets printed to the screen as you can see here. So when you see these augmented operators, and these work also for floats and for integers, I'm showing this one with a string class, in other words a string variable, um, you can see that we have this model which says, well look, because the string class is immutable, you can't alter its value, so Python creates this other object and puts the hello world in it 
after it's joined the hello and the world together bearing in mind the world had a space in front of it and you can tell this because if you look at these two ids here you can see that this one was the id that was there when this finished executing and this id is here because this is what created the new object with this new id here now just to be clear here these videos are using models that hopefully will help visualize what's happening when a python program is actually executing and i think i would like to point out also that these programs i'm showing are python 3.4 running in Microsoft Windows. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.